Storage is a very fundamental part of computing. They are the tanks that store and retain data. And in this video, we'll look at the two different types of disk types available on a Windows operating system, basic disk and dynamic disk. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrent we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. At first glance, these two may seem similar. Both disks offer almost the same functionality that is basically storing data. But in reality, both disk types are very different in the way that they function. Both have their specific advantages and disadvantages. So let's start with the basic disk configuration. It has fixed partitions to store data instead of using dynamic volumes. A basic disk works on the concept of partitions and uses partition tables and logic drives to organize and store data. A basic disk can have up to four partitions or three primary partitions and extended partitions with multiple logic drives. A logical drive is simply a separate allocated space on a physical disk that is designated and managed as a totally independent unit. It differs from a physical disk that is plugged into your computer. Basic disks are fundamentally an old way of providing a storage solution and have been with computers since the age of DOS. This is in stark contrast to dynamic disks that came way later and are compatible with Windows 2000 and onwards. This is one of the main advantages of using basic disks over dynamic disks as it works with really old versions of Windows. Even though the basic disk configuration is an old way of doing things, it's still commonly used because of how simple it functions and most people's work doesn't require them to have a dynamic disk configuration. But having a basic disk configuration does have its drawbacks. Firstly, you can only have four primary partitions or three primary and one secondary extended partition, as mentioned before. Dynamic disks, on the other hand, have no such limitations. This leads me on to the second type of disk configuration, which is a dynamic disk. Instead of having partition tables, logical disk managers and virtual disk services are used. These LDMs allow for dynamic disks to be very flexible. Dynamic disks have a flexible volume of storage instead of fixed partitions with fixed storage space. LDMs allow for a greater ease of flexibility for volume management because it uses a database to track information stored on that disk. Using a disk storage configuration has its own set of advantages, like allowing you to create fault tolerance and volumes. Logical disk managers and virtual disk services also allow you to convert a disk in a basic configuration to a disk in a dynamic configuration. Another great thing about using a dynamic disk configuration is the ability to extend the disk by using another dynamic disk. This is not possible with a basic disk where the capacity is fixed and partition spaces cannot be extended. Not easily anyway. One of the main advantages of using a dynamic disk is the ability to resize volumes. This allows you to make a disk with custom spaces. Another great thing about dynamic disk is the ability to share data amongst disks in a dynamic configuration. So multiple disks connected in a dynamic configuration can act as a backup storage for each other. In a dynamic disk environment, you can create five different types of volumes. The first is simple volume. It works similarly to a basic disk partition as it is independent and can be managed independently. You can change the size of the simple volume on a dynamic disk. If you only want to have one disk connected to your PC in a dynamic disk configuration, you can only create a simple volume. Secondly, we have a spanned volume. This is when you take multiple physical disks and take their unallocated space and then merge them into one virtual disk. This way you can create a huge amount of space on a single virtual disk by using multiple physical disks. Third, we have a striped volume. In a striped volume, you can take equal space from two or more disks. Stored data is distributed evenly among the multiple participating physical disks and it distributes IO requests among the different disks to improve disk performance. The fourth type of volume you can create is called a mirrored volume. It creates a copy of data in a mirrored volume. This is really great if you want a backup volume for another volume and increases your fault tolerance. The last type of configuration is called a RAID 5. In this volume, data is striped evenly across all the disks. All of these volume types work in a dynamic disk configuration, but using a basic disk has one big advantage over using a dynamic disk. 
A basic disk supports multi-boot environments, and you can easily switch systems in one computer, while a dynamic disk doesn't support a bootloader and doesn't work in a multi-boot environment. So if you are planning on installing more than one operating system on your computer, you are probably better off using a basic disk configuration. So conclusion time. If you want more redundancy in your storage setup, it's probably recommended that you go for a dynamic disk configuration, as this allows you to set up different volume types that offer a great backup option and fault tolerance. The ability to mirror a disk or evenly distribute data among different disks is something that just can't be done with a basic disk configuration. But if you don't have such strict requirements and you just want a simple setup, a basic this configuration will definitely do. Plus, it will give you the additional benefit of being able to have a bootloader environment that allows you to have multiple operating systems installed on one computer. Each configuration has its pros and cons because each configuration was made with different requirements and functionality in mind. You just want to figure out what your needs are and what configuration suits you best for your workflow. Anyway, I really hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, then make sure to smash that like button and also leave a comment down below. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.